ended up killing Shichiguro and taking that number two headband back right in front of his son. He lived long enough to become the villain. Like, <laughs> he continued the cycle of hell. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to return once again to the round table of Black Air Force activity. A series that we observe and analyze, 2D is going to beat the shit out of other 2D for our joy and entertainment. And ladies and gentlemen, without wasting time, I'm just go ahead and tell you. Today, we is going over one of the coldest niggas who ever grace a manga panel in animation itself. And not to mention the niggas Riz is unspoken. But ladies and gentlemen, the coldest- Afro got rent? Riz? I mean, come on, y'all. This man was so cold. They had to get Samuel L. Jackson to voice this Hey, wait, no, I thought Samuel, I thought this was Samuel L. Jackson's anime. I could have sworn that he said that in an interview, like, um, Afro Samurai was his anime that he made. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm tweaking, but I could have sworn that was a thing, you know. Evidence do you need? I mean, I'm still going to do the trial and shit, but, uh, y'all already know we got the evidence on deck, so, uh, strap in, get some popcorn, and, uh, without further ado. <coughs> and wait, Exhibit a. I thought he voiced the other nigga that yeah, was in, right, in the show. Now, to understand how this man became the coldest nigga to ever walk the earth, we got to go back to the past. Now, as we can see, Afro is a... Little ugly ass Jedi, I ain't even gonna lie to you. Nigga ugly as hell, bro. Is not built like the black ass NPC from Sonic Unleashed. That big ass bubble head. This nigga is a like Funko Bop. Man, look at this man, dad. This man looking cold as a mug. Yeah. So Afro's dad. Dad look like he be fucking headband. bitches. And you see, the number one headband in this world basically means you was the coldest man to walk the earth. Where Afro mama at? But there comes some baggage with it because everybody's your op. Everybody wants a goddamn headband, but mm. you have to have the number two headband. To challenge the number one. So Afro's dad is about to face off Facts. against the number two headband. Now you see the holder of the number two headband is this man named Justice. But to be honest with ourselves, this is really Freddy Krueger. Oh, okay. Bro decided to make a guest appearance. So this man Freddy wasted no time. Bro pulled out the two revolvers and started blasting. But that man Afro's dad was supposed to man on the earth for a reason. He started blitzing, bro. And this man on his heels kept going back to Elm Street. Okay. So bro, right where he wants him, he goes in for the kill shot. But unfortunately, Freddy that nigga cheated. He decapitates this nigga Damn. right in front of his son. The fuck he cut him with? Fatality. And then this man picks up his head. Takes off the number one headband and throws Toss that bitch. <laughs> he Bushido Brown that nigga. Head get cut off and he says, Ooh, it's unfortunate you had to see that little nigga. Ah, but it's all good though. Because guess what? Yo! Why the fuck was I thinking that shit, man? <laughs> they can get it back on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> I don't call that nigga Bloody Freddy for nothing, nigga. Oh, God, bro. Real niggas know about Bloody Freddy, man. I ain't gonna speak too much on that, but real niggas know about Bloody Freddy. Bloody Freddy. So after Afro just witnessed Freddy Krueger put his dad in a pack and smoke it right in front of his face, his quest for revenge began. Now, I ain't gonna lie. The man went through some tough times. Bro got jumped by some bandits while they was playing with his dad's cold. That is fucked up. And sends him flying and Damn. Him and they busted his daddy's skull. Gino in Otsudu, and he ends up getting raised in a sword fighting orphanage and trained in sword fighting under his master, who is going to be very important later on. So one day, Afro's out with Gino in Otsudu selling some fruit, and he ends up overhearing these dudes talking about, hey, so is number two really back in town? Yeah, man. Apparently, he's back from smoking all the ops. He's back from smoking all the ops. Heard this, and he decided, hmm. I gotta go kill that nigga. So later on, he runs up on bro, beating some cheeks. Clapping cheeks. Hey, yo, what the fuck? And runs up on him like, what number two, nigga? And bro's like, hey, bro, chill. You see me busy up in here, don't you? Yeah, yeah, fuck all that. Her booty stank anyways. What's the number two, nigga? The bro tried to pull out the strap, but Afro slaps his throat. Yo. Fuck. Blocked the dude and killed him. But the dude wasn't dead yet and basically gave him the Thanos speech. You should have gone for the head and murks himself. So later on, Bro's crew ends up pulling up on Afro and all the kids. Oh they no, to he got his nigga. he so got his fucking village Afro slaughtered. Straight up surround them. They are really about to jump a little kid. They said we sliding for background character 384. Clearly, Afro said I didn't bet. So he started drinking his lemonade, put the lemonade at Bro, and used it as a distraction to take his sword and decapitate. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> little nigga moving out here. Damn. This nigga was Thorfinn before Thorfinn? Hold the fuck on. I don't remember all this shit. I ain't gonna lie. I might have to rewatch Afro Samurai. I don't remember all this shit. This nigga was black. We had a black Thorfinn, okay? We got a black Thorfinn in this bitch. What the fuck? Makes this guy kill his own teammate, slices his grown ass man in half, 
But then Gollum comes behind him and grabs him and starts saying, My flesh is Jesus Christ. But then this ugly bum right here ends up whacking him. This Pirates of the Caribbean reject looking motherfucker. Then bro starts stepping on him and oh, saying, man. Yeah, we slotted for our nigga Regka. But one of the kids throwing a spear at him and cutting off his ear. This nigga's Mike Tyson. Then Afro jumps up and shoves Damn. his in bro's neck. Damn. Damn. Saying, Where's number two? I'm gonna kill that nigga. But then bro told him the number two is dead. And somebody done already killed him. So this is yeah. where we're going to end our first flashback sequence. Cause yeah. this is just the first one. You can never get revenge, man. So now we go to the present. Now, as we can see, Afro is the holder of the number two headband. Right, he is right. about to get jumped. So this bandit walk up and he like, well, 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 looks like this is the end of the road for you. Afro Samurai. Now, Samurai. Now, is about to yank that headband off of that nappy ass head of yours. You nappy headed motherfucker. But this man, Afro, was not phased. Bro spit out the work. Zaza and hit that pose. So they all start running at this man like some hungry ass hyenas. So Bro shoots this musket, but Afro cuts the bullet in half. Mm, and it gets nice shot at that motherfucker. Everybody behind him. And look at all these ugly bastards just running to their death. This was a damn massacre. Not even a fight. I don't even think Bro broke a sweat. Look at this dodge. It he went through the bitch. Damn, that's and it was crazy. Disgusting. And, and they ain't even one. split the hair. You know what I'm saying? That's how you know black hair is strong, man. He ain't even split. He ain't even come out with split ends in that. Motherfucker. <laughs> bastards just run to their death. This was a damn massacre. Not even a fight. I don't even think bro broke a sweat. Look at this dodge. It <laughs> went through the nigga's hair. And this came straight out, bro. That nigga ain't got no nappy hair, bro. So then after it's all over, the lead band is like, wow. Why you had to do this to us, nigga? The fuck we do to deserve this car? Y'all did it to yourselves. response was, bro, just casually smoked their face. That Zah hit, nigga. It hit different now that you killed a hundred niggas. Nigga. Then after that, he went to his imaginary friend, Ninja Ninja. And bro said, hey, pass that shit, yeah. nigga. This, this who I thought Samuel L. Jackson played. I thought Samuel L. Jackson played him. You know what I'm saying? Also, bro, why didn't we get to see him fight four, five, three, four, and five, bro? Like, I think that would have been an interesting story if we saw him fight uh, three, four, and five. Because I'm guessing he, he didn't just get the number two from, like, you know what I'm saying? Just as a child, I'm guessing that. I'm guessing you started with five, four, three, you know what I'm saying? So, but but either way it go, I just feel like, bro, it would have been kind of, like, nice to see him fight five, three, four, and five, bro. Like, that would have been an interesting story. But anime was different back then, too. So, you know, they probably wouldn't have, like, we probably wouldn't have got the ending if they did that, you know. Like, it would have never got the 12 or 24 episodes, however many they had. This monstrous inhale, bro said, <laughs> God Damn. So after that massacre, word starts spreading out that Afro's back in town. Everybody in this bar is shook. They like, boy, ain't no way in hell that nigga real. And I know <laughs> that nigga ain't real. High as fuck. It is smoky as shit. Probably smells like straight black and miles gas in a two pack of ass. So this man Afro walk in here and all these sketchy ass motherfuckers are shook. That nigga real. Up to the fine ass bartender. I ain't gonna lie. So she like, hey, how you doing, baby? What you feeling today? Penny, Patron, Crown, Bacardi. I can make a mean ass mojito, nigga. So you think Afro would get <laughs> mojito, mean ass my nigga? Like just straight Hennessy straight out the bottle. Nah, you know get that nigga some. Manejo. Lemonade. Oh Ice shit. Cold. What? Embarrassing. <laughs> so everybody like, hey, what the fuck? Oh, soft ass nigga. Soft ass nigga. nigga looking like ball rock. Bull slams the glass of lemonade. And he's like, yo, man, you must drink a man's drink, huh? But Afro lifted up his hand and shot he was like, another one? On his tab? So then Big Boy tried to swing Facts. at him. But Afro backhands broke. Bitch, fuck out of here. Second. And look at this unspoken Riz. She was like, God damn. So Afro pulls up this crazy ass looking straw. And she's like, Damn, you cold as hell. Nigga, no. <laughs> Weak ass, bro. That weird ass straw, bro. Zesty ass straw. After Afro left the bar. Some dude from the bar followed him. And he ends up pulling out this big ass crossbow. And just started shooting. Bro came ready to hit a lick. So while Afro's blocking all the arrows, Bro got death. But so he pulled out the new tool. Bro said, I'm getting that headband at any Yo, these niggas be using any type of weapons. Bro stabbed him in the head. Bro said, night, night, motherfucker. But after he watched this idiot, is where stuff got crazy. This a big ass nigga comes from the top of the cliff. Pulls out a rocket. <laughs> that nigga thought this shit was GTA. Blown off a cliff. That brother is slumped. So after Afro gets blown off a cliff, he ends up getting found and taken care of by this. He was so bad, she even had this man Afro mesmerized. He ended up seeing her butt booty naked. naked. She looked at him like, oh damn, I thought it was a dream. And bro just looked at her and said, yeah. 
Yeah. But literally, Afro no Shotty was two timing him the Fuck whole time. She was working with the goddamn Peanut Head Collective, the ones that shot Afro off the cliff. Wasn't this like his homie? Wasn't like, her? She like, like his homie or something so from back in the day? These fireworks with me. So they went outside, started watching these fireworks, and she just got freaky as shit. She started rubbing up on this man's arm, started kissing him. So obviously, that man Afro was like, oh, I gotta beat the cheese, nigga. Come on. Now, yeah, yeah, hey. uh, you know what happened next. Turn on the R&B music, nigga. These are nah. my hands, These are my hands. nah, that's turbulence, nigga. That's turbulence. Why he lying? Why he lying? It's turbulence. It's not. Nah, it's not that. Nah, he lying. I'm not believing that. This this is fake. This ain't real. This is not real. What is it? Dispend all belief? Yeah, dispend all belief. See, I'm just clapping to congratulate a young nigga. That's turbulence. So after Afro dropped off the BBC Glizzy destruction, Shawty said, God, I can't nah, do this no more. She ends up betraying the League of Peanut Heads because she was like, nah, I can't do this. The BBC too good. But actually, the reason was this is actually his childhood friend Osamu yeah. the whole time. The one that straight up found him when he was left for dead. And she said she wanted to watch the fireworks with him before she died. So while they having this sentimental last conversation, Die. they end up getting ran up on by the ops. So Afro's telling his Shawty, you need to get the stepping button. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Bitch letting the BBC hypnotize you and shit. And then they destroyed a burn the house down, bro. Two niggas got a flamethrower, bro. These niggas got all type of weapons. This man even more revenge driven. Bro, it's like, first my dad, now my shawty. Nah, nigga, that ain't gonna do. And then this man, Ninja Ninja, come out and he started talking, saying, Hey, my brother, I mean, at least you got the hit. Now keep this pick that she gave you and pick out that nappy ass head, boy. So Afro goes up and runs up on the Empty Seven Clan, or basically what I've been calling them the whole time the League of Peanut Heads or the Peanut Head Collective. I mean, they basically the knocking niggas. With heads. But, anyways, they ended up making a robot clone of this man look at his blood is facing his doppelganger bro doing the same thing that he doing so afro started getting i would have beat my afro ass nigga stop playing afro me afro was getting whooped and then the peanut heads on top like yes my brothers witness that nappy headed are they black but that man afro had to lock in so that man had to unlock uh, the uh, uh, instinct, uh, but we ain't know what the hell to call this back you know what i'm saying so you know what i'm saying that's that's primitive instinct you know what i'm saying oh Oh, the Nobunaga instinct. You know what I'm saying? Edo era instinct. Ooh, Edo era instinct. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I don't even know this the Edo time. So he unlocked the power of Bob and Weed. And look at his elegant ass jump. Then he just slices bro right down the middle. Made yeah. light work of that phony ass. How he got so blood? Later on, while he's basically raiding their palace, he ends up running up on this one peanut head. And bro is just sitting there with some damn head. That nigga listening to eat. I don't know what bro listening to, but it sound like he listened to some party leaks. Bro saying. Then bro just starts pouring some tea, then just starts bowing down saying, please just let me listen to my cardio leaks in peace. So after Afro passed, he <laughs> Nah, bro. Shut him off the cliff. <laughs> One of them Cardi fans got isekai into this bitch, bro. So after Afro passed him, he ends up running up on the big ass dude that shot him off the cliff. But Afro made short work of this bozo. Bro came from the roof and said, this is for my shot. Bitch. But then Duke spawned more peanut heads from his backpack. This is the sword in his chest. Jesus and he Christ. Just him at the Daniel. Dude. And bro was like, oh shit, get off me, brother five. Well, Afro just picks up Yo. his sword and just makes Why do I feel like this is like a Dark Souls type game? You know what I'm saying? But in anime form. Like, I feel like this is a. It's like a this is like Sekiro the anime, bro. Literally. Like this nigga Sekiro, bro. We basically got Sekiro in anime form back then in like 2007. So about five minutes later, he walks into this next room, and Blood right here think he playing Splinter Cell. Bro thinks he's camouflaging the bodies with his night vision, but this man probably had the most brutal death in this entire show. So he trying to sneak him, but then he looking at the thing, he like, wait a minute, where he go? Yo! Oh my God! Oh my goodness! But now, what's even more crazy? That nigga's a sick nigga. Afrobot came back. So then they start having the fight of the century. This whole goes up through Kingdom Come, and then they just start fighting while falling through the clouds. That's crazy. Afro got a good stab on him, and the robot was like, "Oh shit, danger, danger!" And Afro just slams the robot back into the palace, and then the sword comes down right into its head. Oh shit! The robot ends up blowing up. Now this nigga Afro too smooth. Literally. Nigga said that felt good. So after Afro cooked the entire league of peanut heads and spun back for his shawty, he ends up running up on a man with a teddy bear. On That's her brother, head. right? And he's like, Nigga didn't fall my nigga Kanye. I've been waiting a long time for this. 
Afro Samurai. This nigga is breathing and sounding like Darth Vader. This man Samuel L. Jackson must have loved that role as Mace Windu because this entire fight was a Star Wars reference. But this man Afro does not draw his sword and he just starts running away. And then he starts getting cooked a little bit. So Teddy Bear Darth Vader's like, How dare you mock me, nigga? I mean, you're already one with the dark side, are you not? Hey, nigga, that's kind of racist. Why? It's kind of racist. Innocent. I'm just speaking the facts. Then he jumps up and just slams him through this entire building. So then he ends up taking off the teddy bear mask. And this is his other childhood friend, yeah. Gino. So now we end up moving to our second flashback and how this man Afro actually got the number two headband. Talk Do you me. remember his master that took him in and raised him and trained him in sword fighting? Right, right, yeah, right. Uh, Brody had the number two headband the whole time. Oh, but man. this man Afro said, I do not care if you are my master. I need that musty ass headband, nigga. And he's like, do you dare fight me, boy? I raised you. I was the father that stepped up. But all these bandits end up running up on them. And Yo, all fuck about that shit. Because everybody wants that number two headband. But it was a literal bloodbath. All of Apple's friends just started dying. Gino got Jesus his back Christ. Blown out. Damn. And then after this, his master turns around and he's like, Afro, do you want this fade? And of course, Afro was like, Fuck yeah, yeah niggas. <laughs> just straight off this master. Bro said, You are not my dad. All right. And Gino got up and he was like, Afro, what have you done? You're my brother, Afro. I mean, even though you're already on the dark side, you're the best way to sit down and join them. Bad cuz. And that man, Gino, fell off a cliff. <laughs> And after that day, Ninja Ninja was born to help Afro cope, and Gino was found by the League of Peanut Heads and turned in to Darth Teddy Bear. Damn, Black they Man. basically did turn. They, they did take that from uh from Star Wars. That's kind of crazy. That's interesting. Gino was found by the League of Peanut Heads and turned in to Darth Teddy Bear. So after Afro sheds Ninja Ninja from his conscience because bro was like, I gotta tap in. Afro finally got serious and they started really really mm. But this man Afro said enough of this bullshit and hits this man with a critical hit. Mm. That man really hit him with the, even though you was my brother, you could still get cooked. Nah, Afro didn't give a fuck about nobody, bro. Rest in piss, bozo. So finally, after all the long years in the rampage this man has gone on, Afro is now about to slide for his pops. This man, Justice, a.k.a. Freddy Krueger, just... Oh, that nigga really man, still had number one. Fuck looking like a dried sponge, start saying, About damn time, little nigga. In all honesty, I was getting bored. But it looks like your black ass has finally came to spin for your pappy. So Freddy jump up and shoot him and told him, Get ready to join your daddy. Nigga. So this man just started blasting, bro. This nigga has an infinite mag. He has to read Infinite voice. mag. And Afro got in close and cut off his arms. But this man, Freddy, said, You've fallen into my trap, dumbass. Can he go on back? revealed how this man killed Afro's dad. Bro has a third arm in his back. That's crazy. This nigga not human, then. He really is Freddy Krueger. But obviously, uh... It's not that easy to kill Freddy. Yeah. Bro reattaches his head. Yeah, this nigga's a vamp. This nigga's King Vamp or some shit. Him through the head. But bro's aim is garbage. He stabbed him through the head. Afro, so come on now. Come on now. You know how we get down, you know what I'm saying? You know how niggas get down. You Come on now, you know what I'm saying? He stabbed me through the dreads, nigga. Come on now. You know you know the strength of our fucking hair. It's all in the hair. And that man Afro finally became the coldest nigga in the land for now. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as you could tell, that was a long ass exhibit A. So to be honest with you, that's the only shit bro needed. But exhibit B stands for bonus. Okay. I mean, who doesn't want a little bonus exhibit from yours truly? So All right. you know Talk the whole main story happens. There's a movie after this where some bad bitch comes and tries to fuck up this whole thing. I ain't never heard about this shit. So another one of Afro's childhood friends. Why is all of wow. his childhood friends trying to kill him? So she I mean, it makes sense though why they trying to kill him. Like they killed his he killed their master, you know what I'm saying? They probably also want the number one because they want to be the baddest in the world. I mean, they ain't learn all this shit for nothing. They got to put they, 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 you know what I'm saying? They strength to the text. They got to test out how, how strong they are, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to lie. These bitches be cheap. <laughs> these all be cheap, man. They using their body. Another one of Afro's childhood friends. Why is all of his childhood friends trying to kill him? So she ends up taking the number one headband from him and ends up resurrecting this man's dad. But what? what we are going to be focusing on is actually none of that. There is a certain fight in this movie that will deadass make you question your morals. And you will realize, even though this man Afro is the protagonist, this man is no damn hero. So since this Afro is no the number one headband, Afro had to go and search for the number two again. So later on, while he's on his journey, well, I feel like he killed a kid. Looking like he off the set of Pocahontas kidnapping some kid. But obviously, bro started shitting bricks when he realized, oh shit, nigga, that's Afro. So bro tried to shoot him with his shorty, but that man got cooked in like damn. five seconds. Blood got his face sliced off 
So then this man's dad comes and he's like, hey, bro, no. I appreciate you saving my kid and everything, dude. Judging by your appearance, are you here for rolling loud, bro? What? Please don't tell you me this nigga got the on, number bro. two, bro. Let's go get some drinks before the concert. And this man was not lying. While Afro was getting drinks with this man, these motherfuckers dead ass having a music festival. Look at the dude right here, bro. Like, yo, 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 what the fuck going on? It's your boy DJ Noodle Barnacle in this motherfucker. Noodle Barnacle? Them niggas really out there partying, bro, in the 80 times. Them niggas turning the fuck up to this. They ain't getting lit as hell, man. Them niggas getting lit as fuck in this bitch. Well, everybody's outside right now enjoying Rolling Loud with DJ Noodle Barnacle. Where that nigga Cardi at, man? Here's bra. Watch me shotgun this shit. So while they continue to talk, the man says, You know, dude, he's not even my real kid, man. You see, his father died to a nigga with an afro. <laughs> The fuck you got yeah, going uh, on, this bro? This is a number two headband holder, Shichiguro. But see, here's the thing. Bro actually has good intentions because he wants to hide the number two headband to stop the bloodshed. But this man, Afro, did not yeah, care dude, at Afro all. Bro will stop shit. at nothing to get that musty ass headband. So they go outside and they're about to do it. Nah, so Shichiguro is like, you know, bro, I really thought we could have been good friends, bro. But your vengeance blinds you, bro. Not cool. So not cool. And it looks like these dudes are just dead even. So Afro tries to land a strike, but bro stops it with chains on his forearm. Okay. He's got this big ass chain. Kurapika? Type B? Our bro missing is a shovel. So he just started whipping that hoe, had Afro on his heels. So Afro said, the hell with this. Let's have a change of scenery. So they run out to the festival and start fighting for everybody. They even started fighting in the damn flow. Okay. They fighting a bad shot. He's out here watching from a distance. So she calls up DJ Noodle Barnacle. And tells is that her dad? Is, is that, I mean, is that his dad? They put the fucking... They put the fucking teddy bear on his head now. So why they fighting a the bad shot? He's out here watching from a distance. So she calls up DJ Noodle Barnacle and tells him, Play my shit, baby. So bro pulls out his mixtape. Nigga said, I'm about to go platinum with this. And they end up getting jumped by the damn foot twin. I guess this man Shredder said, y'all best get ready for my trial. So this man Afro had to deal with these middle of the boss fight NPCs. So after these two literally murdered the entire trash. clan, Chichi Girl's like, let's go ahead and finish this off, brah. Mano way mano, bro. So they started scrapping again. And they oh, you got the headband on his arm. But... This man Afro pulled out one of the dirtiest tricks I have ever seen. DJ Noodle Barnacle drops from the float. Afro okay. Grabs him and pushes him to shoot your girl. What the fuck? Yo, you ain't, ain't shit. Ain't no way this nigga just used DJ This Noodle nigga Noodle ain't Noodle. shit. That man ended up killing Shichi Girl and taking that number two headband back right in front of his son. He lived long enough to become the villain. Like, <laughs> this nigga lived long enough to become the villain. He continued the cycle of hatred, bro. The nigga's King Von, bro. Like, that nigga don't give a fuck about nobody, nothing. Just, like, straight up. Just, just you, you got your own agenda going on. I don't care what nobody got going on. I will harm innocent civilians, people who did things to me, who wronged me, who wronged the world. I just don't give a fuck. That nigga don't give a fuck. This man Afro has basically killed both of this little kid's father figures. And before he left, he had to say a prayer for that. Wait, oh yeah, because he said that his dad died to a fucking Afro nigga, man. Yeah, that nigga, yeah, this nigga's dead. You're, 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 you're sealed, bro. It's over with. That nigga's not living. I don't know, I don't know. That little nigga coming back to kill Afro, bro sad that a black man gotta go out like that too because like I, I fuck with afro god is good god is great let us thank him for this pack amen that is a weak this prayer ugly ass boy with this terrible ass haircut to grieve over his dead father over that pack of the afro did? body Ha, ha, ha. It actually gets crazier from here. So after this man basically killed his Frankenstein ass father and got the number one headband back, the little boy ended up following him. <laughs> An Afro mean mugs little bro and hands him the number two headband nah. and tells him, come get it back in blood. He did this kid the exact same way justice did, <laughs> did him all those years ago. Exactly. And the, cycle of revenge continued. and the worst part about it is, bro, like, like, oh. What if somebody see this little kid with the number two headband and and they fuck around and kill his ass? Like <laughs> this nigga don't even give a fuck about that little nigga life, bro. Like like you know his nigga niggas is like just ruthless in these times. Like niggas don't clearly don't give a fuck. Just like extremely ruthless. Like they'll fuck around and kill a kid. They don't give a fuck, man. That nigga Afro ain't shit, bro. This nigga dog. Like who raised you, nigga? Like what what the fuck? Like your morals is that bad, my nigga? Like what the fuck? No, 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 bro. This nigga's a demon. Well, uh, that's a dark way to end off a video. Well, at least it can't possibly get worse than this. A little longer than a few minutes later. Oh, damn. The manga at the 
in total face off with Apple Beat. There's no way this nigga killed the kid, bro. Wait, how old was he though? Like, I want to know the age, bro. How old was the nigga, bro? <laughs> Did the nigga even like, was he at least 15, bro? If he was like at least 15, 16, all right, bro. But like, dog, bro, you just killed the little nigga? Like, what the fuck? Bro, this nigga's ruthless. Oh, I'm a fucking puke. I'm fucking sick. That nigga ain't shit, man. Hey, well, it is what it is. Afro's, um, Afro, I said it. Afro's King Vaughn, bro. Clearly. That nigga's King Vaughn. He just don't give a shit about nothing, bro. But, uh, yeah. Y'all let me know y'all thoughts of the videos in the comment section below. Subscribe. Like if you enjoyed. Afro Samurai. The real King Vaughn. The anime.